Second segment, episode 166 of Sold with Updike Pew, and I am here with Megan Jones. Um, Megan, I, I found this topic specifically because this fits you. Yes. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, single women that are are not waiting for marriage to go ahead and buy their home. That's right. And when I was doing a little research, this took a little bit of a different turn because it, appear, it it's true that men are not as good at doing this as women are. The number of women, single women homeowners is just, the divide is growing bigger and bigger. I was kind of surprised as you, I'd heard a few of these facts before. It was so funny before you contacted me, I was actually speaking to a friend about it. She's looking into purchasing some property, but to rent instead mm -hmm. of to live in herself. Mm -hmm. But I know in our friend group, RBF, um, I was actually one of the last single women in our group to buy property. So it was great to have those um, people that had already kind of gone before me mm -hmm. to help me with this. And of course, to have you help me with this. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I thought these facts were really interesting. So just kind of popping through some of them. Uh, this was from a, a Business Insider article uh, in uh, January of this year. And in the article, it stated that two thirds of single women say they're not waiting until marriage to become homeowners. And women are owning more homes in general. Um, the home ownership rate among women increased from 50.9 percent to 61.2 percent between 1990 and 2019. Yeah, 10 almost 10 percent in like 10 years. Mm -hmm. While the rate dropped, while the the rate among men dropped from 70.6 percent down to 67.1 percent. Hmm. So. <laughs> it's interesting, but so, no one can really figure out. Why? I mean, I can only speak from my own perspective mm -hmm. of why I purchased a home. Well, t tell us about that. So, uh, like we were talking about in the beginning, I was waiting, like in my 20s, I was waiting because you never know what's going to happen in a year or two. You just keep signing that lease mm -hmm. and you never know what's going to happen next year. But it got to a point where I wanted to be in my own space. I wanted to have more control over where I lived. And I wasn't, I didn't want to be afraid of what my rent was going to cost me the next year. Mm -hmm. So having to constantly renew and constantly battle with that. And plus, it's just a great investment. Mm -hmm. And also, definitely this last year or two, rent has just increased exponentially. And I felt, why spend all that money on something I'm not even getting any equity in, mm -hmm. when I can spend the same amount and have equity and security and maybe hopefully in the long run, you know, retirement options and mm -hmm. things like that. And owning real estate creates generational wealth. Yes. I mean, it, it is the, the, the factor that many people put into their financial portfolio mm -hmm. that, that that grows in the background. You know, you're always working toward paying it off if you exactly. do that 15 or 20 or 30 year note. And so at some point, you know, that debt obligation is going to go away, mm -hmm. but you've still got that asset. Exactly. And it it, it does create more generational wealth than, than any other asset that you can have. Mm -hmm. so, um, and the one of the other points I thought was interesting was you know, marriage rates have been declining for several years and single women aren't planning their purchases around spouses anymore. Right. I think that there, you know, when I was growing up, there was that, that dream of, or, or that path that just the world had taught you to follow, which is graduate from high school. You might go to college. You might not, you get married, you start having kids, you buy a mm -hmm. house and that buying a house was way down the road. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's really shifted back now. I completely agree. Uh, I know at least the way I was raised, my parents raised me to be very independent and be very thrifty and frugal and be careful about my money. So this was buying a home was kind of a next step for me. It's like, well, I've been trying to be safe and careful with my spending. You know, what's the next step? I'm not really good at stocks. So real estate was definitely mm -hmm. a more uh, stable option for me. And like I said, I wanted to have my own space and have mm -hmm. more control over that. But waiting for marriage, I think a lot of women are more dedicated to their careers now, mm -hmm. as well as maybe family or partners or other things like that. But I think we've all become a lot more successful and driven in our careers. Mm -hmm. Not that not having careers is not 
being successful. Right, but right. Um, I, there's more money. Yeah. <laughs> there's more money and access for us. Yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely made it easier. And like I said, my friends, a lot of my friends have purchased property and it was, it was kind of comforting mm -hmm. seeing other people go before me and do that. And they had a mostly easy time mm -hmm. and, you know, there's struggles with all things, but they all enjoyed their property. So I wanted to be a part of that. It's a, it's, you know, it's usually the, the largest financial decision most people make. Yeah. <laughs> and there's, there's always stress that comes in around that. There was a lot of stress. Yeah. And, you know, in your instance, this wasn't necessarily true because you were choosing to buy a home, but sure. a lot of times we talk about real estate transactions tend to have a lot of stress around them anyway, because mm -hmm. it's usually marriage, divorce, birth, death, yeah. job change, job, you know, job loss, mm -hmm. job, you know, that type of thing. And mm -hmm. so, um, it's, it's usually got some stress wrapped around it anyway, but that, you know, yours, I thought, I, I thought went reasonably well. We had to oh, find, yes. we had to go through a couple of contracts to get to different properties. <laughs> Just but. a few, but I think that says more about the, uh, the state of real estate right now. Mm -hmm. That's, <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. But overall, it was definitely not a terrible process. Mm -hmm. Good. See you. Thank they you. see you. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you later. Oh. <laughs> Um, there were a, c a couple other key findings. So the, the metros with the, the largest share of single yeah. women homeowners, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. So Tampa, Florida was number one, mm -hmm. uh, Cleveland. Yeah. That's Total a weird surprise. one. Yeah. Um, in Cleveland, the households owned and occupied by single women is 16.2% and households owned and occupied by single men is only 11.6%. A 5% gap there. Yeah. That's a big gap. I'd also love to see like age ranges on this. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. But that is a very large gap. Yeah. And, and New Orleans was number three. Um, there are a little over 300,000 owner-occupied households in New Orleans. 15.9% of those are occupied by single women and or owned by single women. And 116 by men. Yeah. So there's that other, you know, four, almost 5% gap. So, um, the, uh, one of the things that, that I, I dove down into the report to find out is how does it, how does it look here? So, yeah. um, we are ranked number 37 of large, uh, metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. There are, uh, 1.5 million occupied homes. 159,000 or 10.4 percent of those are occupied by women, with 112,000 or 7.42 percent that are occupied and owned by single men. So, he, here in Dallas, we've got right at a three percent gap. Wow. Yeah, really, really surprising. Um, good job, so, ladies. Yeah, good job. <laughs> good, good job, job. ladies. <laughs> so, what did, what were some of the things that you would? tell someone if, if, if uh, one of your women friends come to you and said, so what did you do to prepare? How long did you think about it? How long, you know, how did you, what would you tell them? So I probably, I had been thinking about this for a while, but seriously, like seriously considering maybe about a year and a half, um, definitely at the start of the pandemic, we didn't know how long everything was going to last. Um, that actually, the pandemic actually helped push me forward in this process because I love to travel and I like to do some international travel, but not being able to do that over the last year helped me save enough money for a down payment. And that had always been a big thing that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, because I, you know, like to have a good cushion in my savings, but saving up for that down payment really made me more comfortable and helped me put a very big magnifying glass on my spending mm -hmm. and seeing if I could actually afford to own a home. Cause mm -hmm. that was kind of a, uh, a, that stopped me for a bit too. I was kind of concerned. Could I actually afford to, uh, to own it mm -hmm. month to month, the month to month spending? Mm -hmm. um, I could. And, maintain so, it. and maintaining it. Yeah. Yes. Because that's a huge concern. Mm -hmm. But honestly, the more I spoke to my friends, the more I spoke to you, uh, gathered more information it beca I became much more comfortable. So definitely save up for the down payment. Obviously there's a bunch of different programs mm -hmm. to help people with that. And then obviously you want to get your credit in order. 
Um, I've been blessed to have pretty good credit, so that wasn't a huge concern for me. And then also, you know, definitely you want to consider where you want to live, like what kind of location. Um, I've kind of been, <laughs> I know when we first started, um, you know, I was very dedicated to a certain area and it was difficult for me to find something in my price range, but we worked it out. We did, but <laughs> yeah. And you know that it, that, that actually happens a lot of times yeah. with, with everybody where, you know, they really want to work in this or live in this one area because mm -hmm. of whatever they, they, they play there a lot or they work right there or, you know, they've got family there. And what we found is sometimes you just have to like go out a little bit. Yes. And you can kind of, that's mm -hmm. usually where, it, you know, what we, what we end up seeing happen. And we did. So, and we yeah. found, we found the golden egg. We did. Yeah. And interest rates are still great right now. I know everybody's talking about the Fed increasing their rate. And while that doesn't really have a direct impact on mortgage rates, they do somewhat track each other. And mm -hmm. so I would imagine that we'll probably see interest rates go up probably a percent, percent and a half over the next year, it's not too but bad. it's still going to put them at like four and a half percent. So, okay. you know, when I started selling real estate, interest rates were 13%. So, oh my gosh. yeah. When, uh, you know, it was so funny. I remember very clearly when interest rates came down below 10%, you could just hear the cheers of these realtors because even the generation before me, uh, were selling homes when interest rates were 18%. That's insane. I, I can't even imagine. Yeah, it, it it was crazy back then. So, well, I hope that you've found some of this helpful and useful. Megan, thank you so much for coming on. Thank We're you really for having me. <laughs> and if you would like any more information about our subject today, just reach out to us. We would be happy to do that. Um, if we can help you in any, any way with real estate, we would love to do that. And as Weston always says, remember, we want to be your realtors for life. <laughs>